Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to my inbox review of Dragons 135th SD KFZ 251 slash 16 AUC mid 14mm Flam Panzerfagen, which is basically the flamethrower variant of the 251 half track, in this case with the C model. So this is going to be one of the half tracks that's going to make up my diorama for the Kursk 75 group build. And uh, as always, I thought I'd do review this kit. This is a very cool model. I've always wanted one of the 251 flamethrowers. Very unique looking vehicle. This kit was released in 2017 and it is reference number 6864. So I do believe this kit is a simplified re-release of an older uh, 251-16 OC kit that Dragon released probably in the mid 2000s. So that said though, it does come with many nice extras. However, it's not as it doesn't have the dragon card presentation anymore. So with that said, let's have a look and see what we get. So first we're created with a really nice and um, eye-catching box art of this machine being used in Nanger. We get our standard dragon uh, color, color uh, marking guides on the side of the box as well as cartograph decals. And we get some CAD drawings on the side of the built-up vehicle some CAD drawings of the flame projectors themselves and the uh, pump system and then on the back again more CAD drawings of various details we do get some DS uh, crew members which can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you, you view DS so let's see what we get inside the box so uh, when this kit arrived to me it did come pre-bagged I've already unbagged these parts just to save time so we get our standard uh, grey plastic, a uh, few clear parts and our standard dragon instructions with our pretty heartwarming blue do not use parts as always. So let's begin by looking at the instruction manual and working from there. So starting with the instructions as always, we get a very standard dragon style pamphlet. We get our sprue map with the obligatory blue do not use parts. Again, you can throw those into your spare bin. Or whatever um, there's gonna be a lot of parts we're not going to use from the normal troop carrier uh, which is going to be replaced with different types of pumps and projecting systems for the flame chores. step one we're going to begin as per normal if you've ever built any of their 251s before with the uh, fuel tank engine motor and battery assemblies in the lower hull tub i tend to leave all this out you don't see any of it once you put the um, the whole plate on or the floor plate over this so you can kind of leave out a lot of this if you don't really want it to it's not going to be seen then we're adding our suspension arms and our um, another part of the floor plate here that fits in on to step two and three again we're adding our idlers and our dry sprockets as well as the uh, axles for the, the the front wheels here Again, it's um, somewhat similar to the AFE club case and how this, these sections go together. Step four has us adding the road wheels. I tend to leave these off until after the painting process. I'll paint these separately and then mount them to the vehicle. Just easier to get into all these um, figures for road wheels. Just make lives e easier. Step five, we're moving on to some of the more interesting aspects of the 251-16, which is the flamethrower equipment. So we actually have the engine and uh, compressor system that basically pressurizes the, I believe it's a tar and gasoline mix, if I remember correctly, that uh, is used for the actual fuel uh, for these flame projectors. Again, this is a very detailed assembly here of this motor. It should look really cool once it's weathered up as well. Step six, we're doing the plumbing work again for the, uh, for the flame projectors or for the, the motor. We do have some piping here, but it's going to be interesting to see is that like a string or is that going to be like a, a final pipe, which is the actual uh, feed pipes to the uh, the flamethrowers themselves. So moving on to step seven, we're actually adding our components to the fighting compartment floor. We're adding our engine and compressor assemblies for the flamethrowers, as well as some very simple uh, rifle racks for the Mausers. We do have options for our driver, co-driver seats. Uh, we have some simplified one-piece seat designs or these two-piece um, uh, seats that are more 
kind of familiar to the two five ones. And we do actually have a small piece of photo etch here for the spring um, for the uh, the back of the cushion, which is kind of cool. Moving on to step eight, we have the mounting of the we have the mounting of the fighting compartment floor to the um, suspension or the chassis, as well as the firewall and uh, driver station. Uh, this actually seems to be a one-piece design, and we do have decals to, to do the uh, um, a dial facing, which is nice. It's also telling us to put in our driver figure if we so choose to use him. I will probably use the DS um, driver figure just because uh, I know these actually do fit into the driver compartment. And you're not going to see him once the vehicle uh, is has the upper and lower hull attached. Um, so you don't have to worry about the kind of dodgy detail that you get with DS. Now we're moving on to step 9 and 10 and we're adding these large uh, fuel tanks to the, um, the hull sides. So the difference between the uh, AFE Club 251Cs and the Dragons is that Dragon actually does each hull wall separately which actually is a little bit more advantageous to us the modeler because we can build these in their entirety weather them, paint them and then assemble them together it just makes life a little bit easier for us if you choose to build the sub-assemblies so now moving on to step 11 now we're actually adding the hull sides together as well as some smaller details a, a probably a little crew chair here So I'm going to probably weather all these up separately and paint them and then put them together. So it's going to go together a little bit different than how I'm putting the 251 slash 3 command vehicle from AFE Club together. So you're going to see a very different and uh, interesting difference in how I put these models together even though they're the same machine. Then we're coming to the armoured fission ports and step 11. These should be very nicely detailed and should go together a little bit better than the AFE Club ones. These were an, an awful bitch to put together with AFE, so I'm going to be very curious to see how the Dragon one compares. Then we're adding our uh, various different upper hull details, the front plate, the engine access hatches, our rear MG34 self-defense machine gun for the AA row. Uh, I'll probably just leave these off until the end because that, that's just going to snap if you do it now. Then we're doing interior details such as the side um, fission ports. Step 13, we're moving on to the rear hatches, which are going to be more or less locked shut for the uh, 251 slash 16. That's just going to be a big dirty uh, fuel uh, compressor system right behind this, so you can't use the rear axis hatches really to get in and out of the vehicle. Step 14, upper and lower hull is coming together, as well as the rear um, hatches. Again, a lot of very small details, uh, especially on the, the rear axis hatch. So this model really will need sub-assemblies to make life easy to paint this up, I think. Step 15, we're moving on to the fenders and stowage um, units here, these little uh, lockers. And these can be modeled open or shut. That's kind of cool. So I might actually uh, model one of these open, maybe uh, in their haste, the crewman hasn't secured one of them in his flopped open in the heat of battle. Gives you a bit of options. Step 17, we have the, the shield for the um, for the actual flamethrowers. So it's very closely modeled on the shields for the, M30 or the MG34 at the front of the vehicle. However, they do have some very small details. I am actually really looking forward to putting these flamethrowers together just to see how they come together. We do have options for barrels, which are slide molded in this case. We have uh, the barrel with and without the uh, muscle caps. So basically stowed first is in action. Step 20, we're moving on to some very small details. I'm not entirely sure what these are for. Okay, these are actually small uh, plumbing pipes to like, you know, channel fuel around the, uh, the various different projectors. I imagine these are going to be very delicate and we're going to kind of keep an eye out for these in plastic. It also has us mounting the side fenders. And then step 21, which is the final step, we have the mounting of our, our flame drawers. Again, different options uh, with and without the uh, muscle caps. Also, we're going to be adding the uh, 
uh, cabling or plumbing to the rear flamethrower. So there, there's actually a separate flamethrower projector uh, that basically someone at the back of the vehicle could take off and spray with fire if they wanted. Uh, why do you want to do that? God only knows. However, it's German and someone thought they needed it, so it got installed. And then finally we have the mounting of our MG34 self-defense machine gun. The shield assembly is not actually as fine as AFE Club's one. The AFE Club being a bit more detailed and a bit more um, posable. This is a bit more fixed. Then we move on to our markings. We have three markings. We have, of course, the Dragon Unidentified Unit. 1944 whitewash vehicle, that's quite nice. Again, another unidentified unit, 1944 with her tritone camo. We have the only identified vehicle in this entire um, kit, and that is the Panzer Grenadier Division Grosch Deutschland, 1944. Again, doesn't say what cater operations, probably on the eastern front. Then we have again unidentified unit, 1944. And with some kind of cool uh, kind of octopus camo. So moving on to the plastic, we're going to start off with the extras for this kit. So this is what passes for a dragon card these days. It's just a Ziploc bag with some parts thrown in. You get a very, very small, but yet um, packed photo etch fret. So we have the armored uh, backs for the seats, the uh, spring tensions for the uh, backrests for the driver and co-driver. We get a really cool anti-aircraft gun sight for the MG34, which I'm going to rob and put on to my uh, 251-3 command vehicle instead, because I want it instead for that. I'll get a few other little bits and pieces. So again, it's a nice little bit of detail there. We get two Ziploc bags with the cords for the plumbing. These are nylon braid. These should go together pretty well. They do come with um, a piece of fiber optic style plastic inside it just to stop them from on frame. So these should go to, should hold up pretty well. And we get another bag of nylon braid here. Again for the rear flame tour mount on the back of the vehicle. We get Arguably the smallest Ziploc bag I've ever seen. I don't even think they made them this small. Um, we get two pieces of um, die-punched foil. Then we move on to the small cartograph decal uh, sheet that's provided. These are all Thermoct here uh, vehicles. No uh, Foffin SS. So if you want to do uh, one of those vehicles, you're going to buy aftermarket. Again, these are cartograph. And they're going to be pretty solid. We get a few different fire extinguisher mountings. We get our dials for the uh, various different speedometers and what have you, as well as a few tactical markings. So moving on to the plastic and final. So we're going to start off with this mess of a fret. These are the DS Crewmen. So you can see these are really soft and they do have very pronounced seams and very thick gates on their, on their uh, sprues. So these can be very tricky to clean up uh, because they are so soft. Quick way to get around it is just to get some liquid... Um, Get some liquid super glue and take a cocktail stick and apply it along the seam and then it'll, it'll harden it sort of sufficiently so you can cut it. I might use them, I might not. Um, I hear kind of mixed things about final figures. Sometimes it, the because they are flexible, the paint can come off. Again, if you coat them in a very thin coat of super glue before you actually paint them, uh, just using a cocktail stick to spread it over the, the surface in a very thin coat, you can paint them up and it shouldn't flex and it shouldn't chip the paint that way. We get our driver. Again, the detail on these is actually pretty nice. But it's just, again, they're final. I don't understand why drag just can't mold these in plastic. Because, uh, no, no one likes DS. Anyway, at least they're there. So you can um, model this with a crew if you so wish. I'll probably make up or scratch build my own crew for it. Then we have, then we have the lower hull tub. We do have some detail on the lower hull here, different rivets and access ports. Again, really crisp, um, as we'd expect from Dragon. We 
You also get a clear sprue for our fission ports and the armoured fission blocks themselves. These can be a little bit brittle, so I would recommend being careful with them, taking them out of their sprues. It is for easy to shatter them, but I'm not seeing any flashing on it, uh, so these should go together pretty well. It's my only real gripe with the AFE clubs is they often have a lot of flash, and they can be very tricky to clean things up. So moving on to the plastic proper, we're going to move on to C sprue. So this is a very busy sprue, but uh, the detail again is very nice. A lot of, uh, the only downside is there's a lot of like molding tabs that'll have to be cut away. So if you look at the uh, spring suspension leaves here for the axle, there's a lot of um, tabs you're gonna have to cut away. Detail is very nice though. Again, very crisp. We have our engine access hatches. The hinges for the rear uh, doors. These were an absolute nightmare to put together with the AFE Club um, kits. They're actually two parts in AFE Club, whereas Dragon have molded them as one, thank God. We have the battery for our half track. Again, this detail won't be seen. We have the fuel tank, again, won't be seen. Steering wheel. Again, really crisp. We have the roof plate where the machine gun mount is. We have some details I believe are going to be for the flame throwers. We do have our antenna assembly here. It was actually pretty thin. Um, I might still replace it with stretch sprue, but it doesn't look half bad. Then we have our two MG34 machine guns. These do not have hollow muzzles, so these are pre-Gen 2. Again, for some reason they're full of tabs that have to be very carefully removed and uh, filed away not to lose the shape of the machine gun barrels. So that's sea sprue again very busy and an assortment of many many different parts. Moving on to a sprue again we have a big blank here so there must mean something else here. We have some of the fission ports again in, in solid plastic if you don't want to use the clear. We have our fighting compartment floor Really nice, crisp detail here. The um, diamond cross pattern on the Dragon Kit here is far, far finer than it is on AFE Club. It's much. I always find the detail with the when you compare the two is that the Dragon stuff is also just a bit more sharper and finer. But that said, the AFE Club is actually very nice at the same time. We have our fenders. Again, one piece assembly and fairly crisp, not seeing any flashing here. Again, it shouldn't for a 2017 release. We have the actual rear doors to the troop compartment. They do give us these little cheat um, slots here to help us line up parts. These are probably for um, fuel racks on the back of the doors. And we have detail on the inner face, not seeing any uh, pin marks or um, any punch marks that have to be filled, which were present on the AFE club. So that is C, or that, that is A sprue, and that's very nice so far. Again, very, very solid details. Moving on to B sprue again, big section cut out of it, as you can see here. So they're probably they're they're pulling from different kits. Again, we get another antenna. Again, very fine, but probably overscale nonetheless. We have our machine gun shield for the front weapon. Again, not as fine as the AFE clubs one. Uh, what AFE do really well is these machine gun mounts. Um, Dragon simplifies theirs ever so slightly. We have our tools, our Pioneer tools. Again, nothing really to talk home about, like nothing to write home about here, they're pretty simple. We have our direct vision armor ports here. So we do have clear and solid plastic options if you so want to use that instead. We have our firewall and driver station. Again, really crisp. The details are really nice on this and should go together. Like I'm actually looking forward to painting these up because they're a little bit more defined than the AFE Club one. Um, the AFE Club's uh, dials seem to be a bit smaller and a bit more delicate, just um, on a, like an eye inspection. We have the rear plate for the um, rear doors here, so it's a two-part assembly. We have our two MP40 um, 
the machine guns for the, the mount on the side of the vehicle. So beside the driver, the co-driver, they have a, a mount system for their MG4 or their MP40s, uh, just for self-defense. They're pretty nice. Again, solid barrels, but you're not going to see that detail anyway, so it doesn't matter. We have some of the benches here for the troop compartment. Won't be using any of those. We have our fire extinguisher, which is a bit ironic given it's a flamethrower vehicle. We have our personal communication radio set. Again, really nicely detailed. I will be wiring this one up again as well, because uh, I'm on a roll wiring radios all of a sudden. So that's really nice. Moving on to H-Brew, we have our upper hull half here. Again, really crisp. Lovely engraved detail, as well as some really nice weld um, seams running along the nose of the vehicle. Again, we have these silhouettes here, these cheat locators to help us align parts of the flame drawer. And then we have the hull halves here. And this is how Dragon goes about their 251s, both the offsees and these, that they actually keep the, the hull sides as two parts rather than um, an upper and lower part that AFE Club do. And this is actually kind of, I prefer this to a certain degree because I can just basically leave both as separate panels, build them up in their entirety, weather them in their entirety, and then assemble them. I know some people don't like doing that way, but that's just, I'm uh, I'm a big believer in sub-assemblies. So we get two of Elsprue, which is the assemblies for the flame tour projectors. We do get style mode of barrels, one with, uh, one with the cover cap for travel and one without. These are hollow. Again, these seem to be much newer uh, moldings I have seen a little bit of damage here on some of the smaller parts. These are very fragile. Again, a lot of um, molding tabs that need to be removed. So it is the only drawback to Dragon Kits is so you have to have to deal with these little tabs. It does um, kind of make you flirt with danger a little bit, but if you take your time, you're fine. And we get two of those. And then we also get a sprue adjoining to the other L sprue here that has the seats for the driver and co-driver. Again, really crisp detail all around. We also have our tow hitch, which is a slide, slide mold at one piece assembly, unlike the FE Club one. This is really fine stuff. The seats are really nice. They're actually a lot finer than they are on the AFE Club offering. I can also, ask, I can also see someone asking me a, a question. Uh, AFE doesn't have the um, 251 16 model. Um, they have everything else, but they don't have that one. So um, I'm, I'm more comparing uh, the 251s in general, so not the actual variants. Still a fair comparison though. We have two of these broom. We get the bottom plate for the uh, lower hull. This is where the uh, transmission will be, I believe. This sprue is kind of meh. I believe this is an older sprue. We have our idlers. Or not idlers, our sprock or suspension arm, should I say? We have the bins for the stowage on the fenders, our bump stops. Again, these it is nice detail. However, they have the most dodgy looking Mauser 98 rifles I've ever seen. Unless these are meant to be carbines, but they, they look almost like the mountain rifle that the uh Brunipsenager had. So these are, if these were meant to be standard infantry rifles, they, they proportioned these way off. I, I don't know how they managed it, because you know, the Mauser 98K is kind of well-renowned, and most model companies have been producing them for decades. We get some really nice, fine, um, slidle-moded rackets here for the um, spare um, fuel cans that are mounted onto the rear of the troop compartment doors. And we get two of those screws. And with that, you have my inbox review of Dragon's SDK of Z251-16 Flamethrower. In all, this is actually going to be a really cool kit. I'm looking forward to building this. Its detail is very crisp. Uh, shooting, and also the instructions, I have to say, are very um, legible. They're not like your standard Dragon instructions that are not made for human consumption. So this, sh this kit should go together really well. And I'm going to do, obviously going to do a full build video as a part of my Kursk. 75 bill series so uh, do uh, um, do keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks and also um, do
do stand by for the next video for my 251 slash 3 command vehicle uh, update video which will have the full building weathering and painting of the interior of the model so thank you so much for watching guys i've been shane happy modeling and i'll catch you in the next video bye bye